Hello and welcome to another exciting tutorial. This time with our new tutorial intro. Do you like it? Yay! Okay, great. Now today I want to show you how to create realistic camera movement which will give your animations a more natural, unique and realistic look. There are many ways out there to create something like a camera movement, but they all look really computer generated and simply not real. For example, in this case we have used the small wiggle expression on the position of a null layer and link the camera with it. So the result is simply random camera movement. But it's not really convincing. And what we want to do is turning this into this. Much more realistic and natural. Now what we need for this is yourself, a video camera, a sheet of paper, some sticky tape and a happy little pen. But even a more sad pen is usable. Now for this tutorial I've used instead of a video camera a cheap small compact photo camera. And this thing is able to make small video clips in 640 by 480 pixels resolution and this is absolutely okay. First of all we take our happy little pen and the sheet of paper and draw a cross in each corner. The color of your pen doesn't matter, but it should be in a high contrast to the color of your paper to ensure a proper tracking inside of After Effects. Now we take our paper and our sticky tape and tape it onto our wall. Then we take our camera and film this beautiful object and generate a kind of shaky look. You can even go back and forth, which will look great too. Decide for your own how much shake you can stand, but keep in mind that the four crosses need to be visible the whole time in your clip. Okay, that's it. Now we are importing this clip into our PC and jump right in into After Effects. Okay, first of all we import our clip. Go to File, Import, here is our clip, double click and we create a new composition. Make a PAL widescreen square pixel for example and maybe 20 seconds, hit OK and we call it Camera Movement. Okay, now we create a new comp with our footage clip, create a new null object and we call it tracking data. We don't need the sound. Double click on it and then we have our uh, tracker window here. When you don't see it in your own, go to window and go to tracker. Now we want to track the motion and we want to track the position, the rotation and scale. Now we have to slide our tracking points right in the middle of uh, our markers. Right in this case we only need two markers to track the camera movement and uh, you should choose the, con the, the markers with the highest contrast. In this case let's take uh, the two markers here above. Okay, now we have to click on Analyze Forward. And you see it has perfectly tracked the movement of this clip. Okay, now we need to apply this tracking information to our null object. So we go to Edit Target. Be sure that the layer Tracking Data is selected. Hit OK and Apply. And we want to apply the X and Y dimensions. Okay. And now we need to copy this Tracking Data layer into the main composition. So we go to Tracking Layer, hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a, on a PC or simply go to Edit, Copy and we go to our main composition and here we can go to Edit, Paste. Okay, here's our tracking data and now we need a new camera. Make it 15mm, hit OK. okay. Then we need a background, oops, I have the right position. Then we need a background, we create a new solid, make it white, make comp size, hit OK. And now just to have some texture in the background, we apply the effect fractal noise with white solid uh, selected, type in fractal, fractal noise. And we choose the fractal type subscale. 
go a little bit down with the contrast, maybe something like this. And now we want to give the background a color by using the tint effect. Maybe something like this color. Hit OK. Then we want to create a vignette just to make it visually more attractive by right click new adjustment layer create a new mask with the ellipse tool by just double click it apply the, applying the effect hue and saturation make it a little bit darker then we need to invert this, this mask and just feather the mask a little bit. Maybe something like this. Okay, we call this layer vignette. This layer is our fractal noise background layer. And we call it background. Place it in the on the bottom. This should be on the top. And this background layer needs to be uh, needs to be a 3D layer. Then we create a new text, new text, and we type in real camera movement. Okay, this layer should be a 3D 3D layer too, and we place it right under our camera. The tracking data should be maybe here. Then we create a new light. Right click new light. We need a spotlight. Hit OK. And we move this light a little bit back. Maybe something like this. Actually we don't need those uh, windows anymore so we can close them. Then we place the font a little bit more towards the camera and activate in the material options the shadows so that is a little bit more 3D like and we can apply the effect bevel alpha just to give the font a little bit more perspective we can increase the thickness to maybe about five pixels. Oh, that's too much. Let's take three maybe. Okay, and the last thing we have to do is to link the, our camera to our tracking data. And you can see that we need to um, scale our background layer up because otherwise we would see those black areas sometimes. So maybe we scale it up a little bit to 100, uh, let's say 120%. And with a small render preview, you can see that this has already a really nice camera movement. But keep in mind that you still have control over your camera. You can still create complex animations and uh, just be sure that your camera is attached to this tracking data and uh, the tracking data will give your camera the whole animation you will do um, this special camera movement look. With this technique you are also able to track other clips with natural and organic movement. This will generate a much more realistic motion not only for your camera. Just link the tracking data to any layer to give them dynamic and realistic motion. For example in this clip you could track the movement of the straw blowing in the wind and link any layer with it. It will always look much more interesting instead of a random movement generated with a boring wiggle expression or something. So I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I would love to see what you guys will do with this technique. Once again, I'm really, really sorry for my bad English, but I will try hard and hope that you guys are a little bit patient. Every tutorial will make me better. I hope so. So thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Bye bye.